The Peanuts, easily one of the most iconic comic strips of all time. It ran in newspapers from 1950 until 2000 and still syndicated in papers today. Not only did it affect people's lives on a daily basis via the newspaper, it also took over television. The iconic specials like Charlie Brown Christmas, The Great Pumpkin, or The Easter Beagle. Each holiday pretty much has a Charlie Brown special to go along with it. These specials still air today, and many of us, of course, not only grew up with it, our parents grew up with it, and even maybe our grandparents grew up with the Peanuts. On television today, you'll still see Snoopy in the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade. You may see him in commercials with the other members of the Peanuts gang, or now coming to theaters with the new Peanuts movie. The Peanuts are alive and as well as ever, and to go along with the release of the new movie is a new video game, Snoopy's Grand Adventure. And I'm... I have to say, a big, big fan of not only the Peanuts, but especially Snoopy. I absolutely adore Snoopy, and I loved playing the NES of Snoopy Silly Sports Spectacular and Snoopy vs. the Red Baron that came out on the PlayStation 2, so I'm very much looking forward to trying out Snoopy's Grand Adventure for the PlayStation 4. Snoopy's Grand Adventure is a platformer at its most basic sense. The game has you playing as Snoopy, traveling through six different worlds, each featuring multiple different levels, having a boss encounter at the end of each of them in order to save not only Charlie Brown, but all their members of the Peanuts gang. In order to get through the levels, you're going to be doing well platforming. You're going to be jumping on top of enemies' heads. And don't worry, you're not killing anything in the game. You're kind of just bouncing on their head, and a few moments later, enemies end up returning. You have to also, of course, jump over pits, avoid different things like fire, or toxic slime. You're going to have to swim and avoid evil fish enemies, swing on vines, and even deal with anti-gravity stuff like UFOs trying to abduct Snoopy or using anti-gravity things to either go farther or slow up your movement depending upon which type you're dealing with. Trust me when I say the game is extremely easy. But this doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It just means that the game, well, is one of those... <clears throat> and let me say immediately that the game is very, very easy. Any hardcore fan of platformers, you're not going to get a challenge here. Don't expect something like a Super Meat Boy or even a challenging Mario-esque game. The gameplay in Snoopy is meant as a very kind of just pick up and enjoy the ride through it. Not to say that it's boring at all times, because the backgrounds in each of the levels are quite nice to look at. There's a variety of different enemies and a variety of different places that you're exploring. You're going into the skies above Paris, then down into the Paris sewers. You're going through a jungle, a temple, or even into outer space on a lunar base. To help out Snoopy is Woodstock, you can actually control with the second controller, and he can actually help you by activating different switches and platforms. The game isn't a true co-op experience, though. Woodstock is very limited in what he can do, but he can help Snoopy out not only by activating platforms or raising gates for him to get by, but he can also find items and be able to kind of pull the items a little bit closer to Snoopy. Maybe an item may be just out of reach of Snoopy's grasp, but with Woodstock you may be able to pull it just close enough so that Snoopy can grab it. Even though the game is a tie-in with the Peanuts movie, it doesn't really revolve around it. It's its own unique story. Basically, you're playing as Snoopy and Woodstock, who sees the Peanuts gang kind of run by and leave a trail of jelly beans. As soon as Snoopy wakes up and sees these jelly beans, his mind starts racing with imagination of his friends being captured, and Snoopy must go on a grand adventure in order to rescue his friends from the various areas. When you're playing as Snoopy, you can of course jump on your enemies, but you can also hover using his ears as propellers, which of course not only is adorable, but is very functional, being able to of course help you get over large gaps. 
Along the way, also, you're going to be unlocking costumes for Snoopy, whether you're turning him into a detective so that he can see through walls that are fake and be able to get through them that way, or turn to the masked marauder and charge through a wall to knock it down to find some secret areas and continue in levels, or putting on your Beagle Scout outfit and then being able to climb on various things like vines or chain link fence. Easily one of my favorite outfits in the game is the Joe Cool outfit. Not only does Snoopy put on the iconic red Joe Cool shirt and the sunglasses, but also any enemy he ends up seeing, he gives the cold stare to and they end up freezing in place. You can actually use them as platforms to get to various different areas. If you're a fan of collecting stuff in levels, you're going to have a good time because there's 300 jelly beans in all of the main levels of the game. There is one world in particular that only has 250 per level, but besides the 300 jelly beans, you also have six Beagle Scouts to find in each of the level, the members of Woodstock's Beagle Scout troop. So they're spread out throughout the stages, and you have to explore every nook and cranny to find them. But trust me, Nothing in the game is difficult to find. It's more of just, did you explore every nook and cranny, make sure that you see a branching path that you check out both of the paths. There is one downside to it though. You have to unlock a lot of the costumes in order to access areas of stages. So you won't be able to find everything on your first go around, especially during the early stages because you won't have the correct costumes. This is a bit annoying, but it adds some replayability of going back and replaying the early levels now that you actually have the abilities to help you out so that you'll be able to find all the jelly beans and all of the members of the Beagle Scout troop that you weren't able to find your first time through. Each of the worlds in Snoopy's Grand Adventure features four or five different levels and then it culminates with a boss encounter. There's a couple where you actually have to defeat the boss and a few of which you just have to kind of avoid the boss, either climbing upwards like a giant pinball machine or running away from a giant robot that's trying to stomp on you. The best part of the game, by far, is the Skies Over Paris level. During these levels, they're scrolling shooter style levels where you get to control Snoopy riding on top of his doghouse, his scarf flowing in the wind, his goggles on, and he's actually firing at various enemies using words. Getting to see Snoopy in full imagination mode while blasting these enemies and maneuvering through clouds to try to avoid taking damage while still collecting the jelly beans and the Beagle Scout troop members, easily the highlight of the entire Grand Adventure experience. And at the end, spoiler here, you actually get to do a battle against the Red Baron. Unfortunately, you don't get to take the Red Baron down, you just kind of have to avoid his fire for a while, but it's still one of, if not the absolute best part of the entire game. Presentation-wise, the game does look good. It, you know, it's not going to blow you away graphically, but it, it sounds, looks, and feels exactly the way I was hoping it would. The platforming all works exceptionally well. The backgrounds are colorful and the areas that you're exploring, whether it be the sewers of Paris or the musical themed level, all have different elements that make them fun to explore. Each has their own sets of enemies and different types of platforms and areas that you're going to be exploring to make each one of them fun. I have to applaud the musical soundtrack as well. I'm not sure if all the music from this is in the feature film or was this music specifically done for this or maybe even from specials from the past because it's all that classic Peanuts jazz music feel. Of course, the Peanuts theme is definitely included at the title screen and the end credits, but each level seems to have some unique jazz themed music that all fits each of the areas well and is definitely enjoyable. I wouldn't mind listening to it outside of the game. From a technical standpoint, the game played fine. I was able to easily platform and it was fun to glide with Snoopy or get the lunar suit and be able to get low gravity with these super high huge jumps. Swinging around on the vines or climbing up was a lot of fun playing as Snoopy. The game never crashed on me. Uh, there was no major graphical glitches. However, there was some slowdown some pretty big slowdown at times depending upon where I was. Sometimes it was when a lot of stuff was going on on screen, sometimes it was like nothing was going on on screen, but either way it was kind of a hindrance. I wouldn't say that it hurt my overall feelings of the game, but I can see some people this being a big problem, especially considering the game isn't really that graphically intensive. But that's not the big problem with this game. In fact, up to this point I haven't said anything negative. But that's because I'm saving the negativity, though, for near the end here. 
there's a huge problem with this game. It, it's such a critical problem with this game that makes me not be able to recommend it to anyone to go pick up. I, I can't recommend it. And that's its length. The game is unbelievably short. Levels were taking me five, maybe ten minutes at most, and after less than two hours, I had completed the game. I am missing a few things from some levels, so I do have to go back and explore some of the areas, but I can't see it taking me more than a half hour or maybe an extra hour at most to go through the levels and find the stuff that I wasn't able to find initially, mostly due to the fact I didn't have the right costumes during the early parts of the game. However, couple that with its price tag. The game is a $50 game on next-gen systems. $50 on next-gen systems and $40 on the last-gen systems. And I'm one of the people who don't complain about price tags and the game length. But when something is this critically short and this expensive, I can't help but feel kind of jaded. I wanted to love this game. In fact, I did love the game. I enjoyed every part of it. It's ridiculously easy. I, I mean, it's uh, saying this game has any difficulty uh, is almost insulting <laughs> to the word difficulty. I mean, you gain extra hearts throughout your gameplay, so you can have up to like seven or eight hearts. And every time you take a hit, you lose a little bit of a heart, but that heart floats up and you can even re-grab it. So you may never actually lose full health while you're playing through the game. It was the fun gameplay that made me enjoy exploring each of the areas, listening to the music, and just getting to enjoy and seeing Snoopy in these various different outfits and environments made it fun. In fact, I was having a really bad day today until I ended up getting my copy of this, and I really enjoyed it. It kind of really did cheer me up. And it's just a real shame that I can't recommend that other people go out and play it. I can't recommend it for Peanuts fans or Snoopy fans or platformer fans. This is one of those ones, it's best to wait. Had this been a lower price game on the PlayStation Network or Xbox Live, I would have easily picked up the game and my opinion would probably be different if it was only 10, 15, or maybe even $20, which is even stretching it in today's market. A lot of gamers complain all the time that a game is too short. In fact, they won't even buy some games if they're less than seven or eight hours. And with this game being half of that, oh boy, I can't see too many people being too happy overall with their experience with Snoopy's Grand Adventure. The thing is though, I have to say that when it gets cheaper, when you end up seeing it for a lower price, hopefully it'll go on sale and I have a feeling it will unfortunately be a bargain bin game pretty quickly. I don't see a whole lot of people running to the store and get it. This may be one of those games that you just put in to kind of cheer yourself up if you're a fan of Snoopy like I am, because that's definitely what ended up happening here. Or you just want a very easy, lazy kind of platformer. Or you want an easy platinum. If you're a fan of getting trophies or achievements, this game has extremely easy trophies and achievements. So if that's something you're into, definitely check it out later on. Or what I think may be even best with this game is getting it if you have a small child and playing along with them. Use this as a beginner's game to kind of ease them into gaming. I think this would work extremely well for that matter. With everything being said though, I am going to end up giving the game a 5 out of 10. In fact, that may be too high, but I, I can't help that my love of Snoopy, Peanuts, and just uh, the overall experience I did have during that short two-hour period was enjoyable enough to be a middle-of-the-road game. Though, definitely wait. Don't go out to the store and get it. Wait till this game gets cheaper if you even want to check it out at all. But with that, that's going to wrap up this review of Snoopy's Grand Adventure for the PlayStation 4. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.